I don't want to be known as a woman artist. I want to be known as an artist. He made fun of me. He said, why would you want to talk about those people? Who are those women? I arrived on the Douglas campus in 1966 as an undergraduate student. Didn't expect to have spent my entire career there. Um, and so I started, and I was there from 66 to 70 during the upheavals that were going on nationally. Um, and then I came back as a faculty member in spring of 76. As an undergraduate student at Douglas and an art history major, I didn't have any female faculty members teaching art history or art. So here I was on the Douglas College campus, which was the largest un uh, college in the United States for women. Um, and there were only men uh, who were teaching. And in the gallery space, they only showed work by white men. My freshman year, um, which was not called first year, but freshman year, I had freshman English comp. I had a, a TA who was a grad student from Princeton, a male, teaching. And I decided, I don't know why, but I decided that my research paper was going to be on Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Carrie Chapman Catt. And he made fun of me. He said, why would you want to talk about those people? Who are those women? You know, and it was at that point that I realized between that and, and my studies subsequently in art history, where no women, you know, were really um, discussed in any way, that I, I just wanted to find out more. I was curious why, if we're in the majority and I see so many women around, we're not, we're not there in the books, we're not there in the courses and so forth. And I, I think that, I mean, we talk about the Douglas difference. I think there was a difference. I arrived at Rutgers uh, in the summer of 78. I became a professor at Mason Gross. I was hired as that, but then I immediately uh, was asked if I would go to the Rutgers Newark campus. I continued to teach one graduate course at Mason Gross all the time I was at Rutgers Newark. I stayed uh, in Newark for eight years actually, and I became a dean, and then I became associate provost of the campus. I loved it, but then I gradually stopped making art, and I woke up in the middle of the night, and I thought, okay, when I'm on my deathbed, um, what do I want to look back and say I've done? Do I want to say I've been a university administrator? Or do I want to look back and say, okay, I got to make more art? And it was absolutely clear to me that I wanted to make more art. So then I upped and resigned my position at Newark and I came back to Mason Gross. And that's when I took over the printmaking department and I started on my print center. I was one of these women who said, I don't need the feminist movement, you know, I'm okay, I'm taking care of myself, you know, I don't want to be known as a woman artist, I want to be known as an artist, all the things that I'm sorry to say people, women still say. Um, and what happened to me was politically I became somebody who realized, you know, what was going on and the discrimination against women. And then the other thing that happened to me was intellectual and aesthetic. And being exposed to the women's art movement my own work fell into place and I realized that all the stuff I was trying to do was feminist and that it all fitted together under feminist theory. And so it was really an epiphany for me. I feel that it was through the feminist art movement that I came into my maturity as an artist. Ferris and I knew each other through the feminist art movement. A lot of the feminist art movement in America started with the, v the protests against the Vietnam War and also it was very tied to the civil rights movement. So people like Faith Ringgold, you know, were protesting the lack of artists of color in major exhibitions and then that kind of morphed into realizing that in addition to artists of color, that there were no women artists in some of these major exhibitions. So all of that kind of came together in the late 60s and around 1970, which is before anybody else was doing this in other countries. If one looks at postmodernist art practice, 
It's really based on feminist principles. It's based on the idea that you, you are making art from your own experience as a person. It also incorporates things like traditional women's art, like working with fabric, working with pattern. Also, you know, the idea that photography and video really became an important art form because of feminism. So our, our friendship and our collaboration really goes back to even before we both arrived at Rutgers. And I think there need to be shows where no one thinks about whether it's a woman or a man in terms of what the subject is, what the title is, and we just hope that there are enough women in it to make um, it significant. I think it also still has to be um, that the subject needs to be raised and the only way to raise the subject is to have shows that are only by women artists or to have the National Museum of Women in the Arts, have the Sackler Center, have the Institute, the Center for Women in the Arts and Humanities. Um, there isn't yet a recognition, a general recognition that enables women to, to go through the same processes as men and, and have the same opportunity um, for success. People still only f look at people and think about identity. I really believe that's the case and put people in a box. So until we can get through all of that, plus deal with the whole world situation and what's going on politically in the United States, um, we really haven't progressed enough as far as I'm concerned. But I'm hopeful because I'm an optimist.